So we were concerned and so we like called our attending and what is up always so i wanted to give you all a quick recap yes i'm in my kitchen before i you know cook breakfast for everybody but i wanted to give you all a recap on my week because i said i was going to do so so you've been following me through my first week of being a general surgery trauma pa and this week was pretty different actually than last week because i got more general surgery than i got in the last three weeks of being on my job because um, I was originally being trained for trauma because there's a little bit more that goes into like how the trauma is run when they come in. So I was learning the ropes on that aspect of things and this week I was more so learning all of the general, general surgery stuff. So what I need to do when I get a consult from the ED and what I need to call, how do I post a case to the OR, that kind of stuff. So it was pretty interesting because that's mainly what I will be doing for um, the first like half of my year as a PA, I think I'll be holding the general surgery phone um, because we are an acute care team, but we have trauma and general surgery under this acute care system. So uh, I'll be doing that. And so it was nice to actually get um, experience, you know, with that aspect of things. But one interesting thing that I wanted to tell you all about, because I'd never seen it done before and um, I got to participate in it was seeing a bladder pressure done. And so with the general surgery, acute care trauma team, uh, they deal a lot in the abdomen, in the stomach, right? Because um, they're general surgery. And so that's really like their area of specialty. Um, and so a lot of what we do has to do with like cholecystitis or, you know, small um, SBO, which is a small bowel obstruction or um, anything to do with like the bowels, like if their bowel needs to be resected or we have to put an ostomy in or a G tube or things like that. So there are all these things that have to do with like the abdomen and all of the con like all of the confined organs in the abdomen, right? So they'll deal with that a lot. And so when you come from surgery, if we have a patient that's coming from surgery and we, as the PAs, we're doing like those checks on them, you know, we'll do three or so checks during the day and then three or so checks at night just to make sure that the patient is doing well um, and they're not having like any acute events um, throughout the day or overnight. So we'll check on them and make sure that that is like, okay, everything is all right with them. So when they come from the OR, they'll be put into a room and we have to check on them. So a lot of our exam is really focused on the belly or the stomach, right? So um, we have to push on the belly, push on the belly, just like you should be pushing on that uh, subscribe button to subscribe to my channel, because that's going to help out. Um, but when we are pushing on the belly, we're looking for any signs of pain, um, any things to notify us uh, that, hey, there's something going on. Um, just like my notification bell will notify you if something's going on. <laughs> So we'll do that, right? So we'll push and things will be notified. So if we're pushing in the right lower quadrant and the patient is like eliciting pain and, um, you know, describing this pain as like a gnawing type of pain, then we're like highly suspicious of, you know, some type of appendicitis or something along those lines. So with that being said, my patient, when he, they came in, um, they were like severely distended, meaning their stomach was so big. Um, like think of it as like a balloon. You've blown this balloon up to capacity and it looks like it's about to pop. Like that is literally how my patient's stomach was looking. It was severely distended um, and they weren't looking like too good really. And so I was like a, a little bit concerned, like me and the other PA that was on, we were a little, a little bit concerned because like we're like, what's going on? You know, this patient... Um, should be looking better because we took them to surgery, right? You take them to surgery to fix them. Um, but that wasn't uh, necessarily what was presenting to us in our like visual, like when we were seeing it. So we were concerned. And so we like called our attending and, um, you know, talked to like the ICU team and they decided that, hey, we should do abdominal pressures. And so they were concerned for compartment syndrome of the abdomen so intra-abdominal compartment syndrome which is like interesting because 
you hear in PA school, yeah, you can have compartment syndrome anywhere, but you really don't think of it anywhere other than like the limbs, right? Like the low extremities or even like the arms, like you think something happened. Now that limb is very taut and tight. And so we're thinking compartment syndrome, but I mean, it can happen anywhere really and truly that's confined. And so in the abdomen, that's where we're really concerned. And so we are concerned about compartment syndrome. So to test for compartment syndrome, you have to do bladder pressure checks. So we have to do bladder pressure checks every four hours is what we were doing. Um, and what that is, is like they'll infuse the bladder with about like 20 milliliters of normal saline, and then they'll check the bladder pressure in there. And so like a normal, like critically ill patient, which are like some of the patients that we deal with, um, you do these more so in the ICU though on a consistent basis, but um, those patients will have bladder pressures anywhere from five to seven, and then that's normal. Um, but abnormal is like 20, 25 and above, you know, like you're severely like concerned, like that is compartment syndrome of the abdomen. So our patient wasn't quite there. Um, their bladder pressure was high, like in the teens, but it wasn't uh, 20 or 25. So we're like, all right, so we're still in the safe zone. But it was really cool to actually see like this this procedure done because I'd never seen it before. And again, you know, this is all a learning experience. So I'm continuously learning. Um, I am still coming home and studying at night. I'm still coming home and looking up things that I saw throughout the day because I want to be well-versed in what I'm going to be expected to do. So with that being said, I was there looking this up. I looked this up for you all so I can talk to you all about it and just kind of better explain what exactly we did. But that was something that was really interesting this past week that I was able to see and participate in. Um, and I was excited about that because, I mean, it's something that I'd never seen done and it's something that I will never forget. You know, if I see um, my patient isn't really looking good and their stomach is super distended and taut and I'm so concerned that they are about to like crash or something, um, you know, I'm going to talk to the ICU team and suggest bladder pressure checks and we'll see what happens from there. But that is something that any of you new PAs who are going into the ICU or um, even in general surgery where you're dealing with the abdomen, you can think of, have that in your back pocket as one of your tools to use if you're concerned about um, abdominal compartment syndrome. So that was my week, you guys, you know, pretty, pretty low in terms of like what I was able to do, like just kind of standard week. Uh, I was able to do a lot of general surgery, um, but get to see some really interesting procedures and things done that I'd never seen before. So I will keep this coming for you all, um, you know, definitely weekly, maybe even more once I start these 24s, just to kind of give you guys a taste of exactly what my day as a 24 hour uh, shift PA looks like. Um, I'm excited to show you all that. I'm excited to like start it because um, I've seen my schedule for the upcoming weeks and honey, it's it's looking good okay like i'm excited about this schedule so um definitely we'll keep you guys posted on that uh if you have any questions for me please leave them in the comment section below i'll do my best to answer them and also you can follow me on instagram again like this video hit that subscribe button and the notification bell it helps my channel out a lot all right thank you guys so much for watching i will talk to you guys next time bye